What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a Google Ads Q&A with six different questions that I received in the comments section. So I took some of those questions out and I'm gonna answer them in this video. So we're gonna get right into it. Question number one is how do I exclude all searches that contain a specific word in Google Ads? So this is a pretty easy one actually. So if there's one word you wanna make sure that if somebody has it in their search query, your ads don't show, all you really need to do is add that word as a broad match negative keyword. So if you go into your search campaign, what you wanna do is go to keywords, you're gonna see search keywords and negative keywords. So let's just say for example, it's Amazon. All you really have to do is click on the plus sign, add a new negative keyword to the campaign level. You can also add it to the ad group level if you wanna exclude it from a specific ad group and just enter the keyword there, so Amazon. So I already have this, so it's not gonna really change anything. Click on save and it's that simple. Now, anytime someone types in Amazon at all, my ads will never show. So you can see some of the different ones that I have here. So for example, cheap, case study, articles, people that are looking for something specific that isn't really a purchasing buyer intent keyword, it's a good best practice to just remove it all together from your campaign. Now, one thing you might wanna do is if you click on the plus sign, let's just say I'm adding two different keywords. So maybe it's something like Home Depot. So you can add that as a negative phrase match keyword to make sure that anybody who types in the phrase Home Depot they, your ads don't show for that. So all you need to do is just put that in quotes and just do Home Depot and click on save and that's gonna add that as a phrase match negative keyword to my campaign. So that's how you add a negative keyword if you wanna exclude a specific word or a specific phrase from your campaign altogether. Any of these words here, if anybody uses them, my ads will never show for them. Next is gonna be number two. Number two is can I add broad match modifier negative keywords? The answer is no. So the way you would actually do that is just add broad match negative keywords. There are no broad match modifiers when it comes to negative keywords. The only options you have are broad match. So let's we'll just use our Home Depot example. So Home Depot, phrase match, Home Depot, and then also exact match. Home Depot. So starting from the bottom, exact match would obviously exclude the term Home Depot if someone types it in. Phrase match, if someone's looking for Home Depot, anything else in their search query, that's going to remove that phrase. And the way a broad match negative keyword works is actually very similar to a modified broad match keyword. So if somebody types in something, for example, so let's just use my example for farmhouse goals and we'll just say someone's looking for farmhouse decor at Home Depot. So let's just say, for example, they type in their search query like farmhouse, home, decor, depot. So they're looking for home decor and home depot, but they end up putting the word decor in between home and depot. Then these two keyword match types would not exclude that search, but this broad match negative keyword would exclude that search because the person used home and depot in their search term. So you can see here, my negative keywords are home and depot. So it's the same thing when we scroll down the example I have here with case study. So if anybody uses those two words anywhere in their search query, since I have it as a broad match negative keyword, it's gonna remove that from my campaign. So to answer question number two, can I add broad match modifier negative keywords? The answer is sort of, but you don't need to use the plus signs in front of your keyword. All you really need to do is just enter it like I did here. So you would just enter it just like that and then we'll get rid of these other ones, add this as a negative keyword and it's essentially gonna be like a broad match modifier keyword. So we can click on save. Now if someone does type in farmhouse home decor depot, if someone does use that search term, then my ads won't show for it because I know they're looking for home depot in particular and not my website. Okay, number three, and I might make an entire video about this topic, but how do I determine when I should increase or decrease manual bids? This is a very difficult question to answer because everybody has different goals as an advertiser. So let's just come over to my campaign and we're just gonna come right at the campaign level. So right now I'm limited by budget. So if my ultimate goal is to drive as many clicks as possible within my budget, which it pretty much is for this campaign, I'm trying to maximize my overall clicks while maximizing conversions as well. You can see my average cost per click is 11 cents. So what I could do since I'm limited by budget here is I can go into my campaign, go into my keywords, search keywords. You can see I'm bidding 15 cents across the board right now. I just recently changed that to 15 cents, uh, just kind of for an example. But if I click on all of these, what I can do is select all 55 keywords I'm bidding on, click on edit, change max CPC bids, and I can decrease bids just because I'm already limited by budget. So why not decrease my bids by two cents. So we're gonna decrease every single bid by two cents. I could also just set new bids and set all of my bids to 13 cents since they're the same across the board. But let's just say I'm decreasing every single bid by two cents. That's all I really need to do and I'm probably still gonna hit my daily budget. So it's another way to get a little bit more out of your budget. 
Now, there's different reasons why you might want to bid higher or lower. If you're not reaching your daily budget and you want to spend your daily budget, then you're going to have to increase bids. And what I would recommend doing is starting with the keywords that are driving the best possible results when it comes to conversions. So I'll come over here usually and I'll look at my conversion rate. Okay, just updated my columns here. So if I'm looking at my conversion rate, my conversion value, and my cost per conversion, that's how you can guide which keywords you can probably increase your bids for. The other thing you can look at is if you have a keyword performing optimally. So let's just say, for example, this farmhouse curtains keyword, it's driving me a lot of conversions, a pretty really strong conversion rate, strong conversion value compared to cost. And if we scroll over here and we look at our search impression share, I'm only at about 40% for this keyword. So I can definitely increase my bid. It's going to help me drive, increase my cost so that I'm reaching my daily budget. And since I'm driving conversions optimally, then all I need to do is come over here. My bid is at 13 cents. Maybe I want to put it up to 20 cents. So we can put it to 20 cents, see where our search impression share is over the next seven days, and then keep increasing it as long as I can drive conversions optimally for that keyword. So that's usually what I look at is how is this, how are my keywords performing for in terms of conversions, looking at conversion rate and conversion value, and then how much have I spent and how much has that returned back to my business? Now, the other thing you can look at is search impression share, because if your impression share is really high already, then increasing your costs might only help you gain a little bit more in search impression share while increasing your costs greatly. So you really want to look for these keywords that have a lower search impression share. If you're at 30%, then, then you can double your bid. If you're using manual bids, just come over. Uh, right now I'm at 13 cents, so I can bring this up to 26 cents. It's going to help me drive more clicks and conversions, and it's going to help me increase my search impression share as well. So when you're trying to maximize search impression share, that's when you would want to increase your bids. When you're trying to get the most out of each individual keyword, and you might have some really high impact keywords for your business. Now with Halloween coming up, right on Halloween, I have a 10 out of 10 quality score, only a 17% search impression share about. And you can see right now I've spent almost about $2 and 50 cents and my conversion value is $20. So this is a keyword that I can definitely increase my bids for because my cost per conversion is low. So there's no reason not to increase my bids and try to maximize as many conversions as possible as people look for Halloween decorations, which are also a time sensitive item. So if we're coming back over here, how do I determine when I should increase or decrease my bids? It really depends on your budget. If you're not reaching your daily budget, then you probably want to increase your bids if you do have your campaign performing optimally. If your campaign's not performing well and you need to lower your costs, then that's when you want to decrease your bids. But I always take into account conversions, my search impression share, and then just overall performance and costs and how much I'm spending on a daily basis. Okay, so question number four, what if I have a high search impression share but few impressions and vice versa? What if I have a low impression share but a lot of impressions? So usually search impression share and total impressions depends on overall search volume for a specific keyword. So I can use two examples here to make this really easy to understand. So up at the top here, this keyword country curtains. So you can see right now, if we scroll over, I've had over 8,000 impressions for country curtains. And if we go over to my search impression share, it's only at about 31%. So I would say this is a pretty large amount of impressions over the last 14 days. You can see the same thing with Ray Dunn. I have almost 12,500 total impressions and my impression share is around 28.5%. So for both of these keywords, I have a large amount of impressions, but a low impression share. So what that represents is that these keywords have a lot of search volume. A lot of people are typing in Ray Dunn. A lot of people are typing in search terms that contain the phrase country curtains. So if I have a low impression share, what I can do is increase my bids to increase my impression share to get more impressions every single seven days, 14 days, or whatever time period I'm looking at. Now, on the other hand, looking at something the complete opposite, Ray Dunn salt and pepper. So I'm clearly bidding on salt and pepper shakers that are Ray Dunn brand. So people who are searching this keyword. Right now, my search impression share is almost at 60%. And you can see total impressions, over 1,100 total impressions. So what that means is this just isn't a high volume keyword. I have a pretty strong search impression share already. And there's not a ton of impressions that I'm leaving on the table because people just aren't searching this as much as they're searching other keywords. So when it comes to the relationship between search impression share and total impressions, it really depends on the search volume of the keyword that you're looking at. Now, me personally, I don't really worry too much about my search impression share when I'm really just focused on conversions. The only time I bring it into play is when we look back at question number three, whether or not I should increase or decrease bids if I do see that something has a low impression share, but it's performing well in terms of conversions. So I personally don't pay too much impression 
too much attention to search impression share unless a client really wants to make sure that they're maximizing it for certain keywords. But otherwise, it's really, for me, it's just mostly focused on conversions and driving as many conversions as possible without really worrying too much about my total impression share. Okay, so number five, is there a limit for call-out extensions or site link extensions? The answer when it comes to creating them is no. You can create extensions at the ad group level, at the campaign level, at the account level. So you should have at least four call-out extensions and four site link extensions for your campaign. I would say that's the absolute minimum that you should have. However, one thing you can do is create ad group level extensions. So if we come over to our ads and extensions and we'll go into an ad group, let's use farmhouse curtains. We'll just stick with our same example here. So you can see the keywords that I'm bidding on. If we go to ads and extensions, you can see I have my advertisements here. Click on extensions. You can see here at the ad group level, I have site link extension for farmhouse curtains, drapes, valances, shop curtains. And then also at the ad group level, I have one just for my shop. Now for call out extensions, I have four here. So curtains start at $13, top rated curtains, drapes and balances, hundreds of farm curtains. I have a structured snippet here. So you can see some different styles of curtains that people are looking for that usually fall into the farmhouse category. So when you're creating extensions, this is probably what I would follow is having extensions at the ad group level because that's gonna give you the best possible quality score for your each of your keywords in that ad group. And it's also gonna make sure that you're providing the best possible user experience for people because someone who's searching for farmhouse curtains might see this link for farmhouse valences and click on it, go to the part of the store that they wanna be in, and they're gonna be more likely to convert if I can show them the products that they're actually looking for. Now, if we go to the Google Ads help pages and we're looking at site link extensions, you can see you need at least two site link extensions for your site links to appear in the ad. So if you only create one, they're not gonna appear in the ad. So you should start with at least two, but I would recommend using four. With desktop, your ad can show up to six site links. With mobile, your ad can show up to eight site links. Now, you don't really see six or eight that often, but if it's something where maybe there's not that much competition, you're one of the only advertisers for a specific keyword, then you might get all of those different site links to show. When it comes to callout extensions, you can see with callout extensions, you can show up to 10 callouts in addition to the text of your ad, but usually what I find is it shows three or four. So you can see here, they have Acme Electronics at the bottom, free shipping, 24 seven customer service, price matching. So those are three callout extensions that are showing. So when it comes to is, if there is any limit, the answer is no. There's a limit to how many are gonna show, but there's not a limit for how many you can create. Now, personally, what I kind of try to stick to is at least four. That's kind of the, the minimum that I try. And then you don't want to create too many because then you're just going to have too many site links and call out extensions. So try to find the happy media. Maybe you want to create six total call out extensions, six total site link extensions and run them for your campaigns and then create some for your ad groups as well. Six and last but not least, should I only use broad match modifier keywords since they cover the phrase in exact match type? So the answer to this question is you should use broad match modifier keywords if you have a large budget and if you wanna reach people as they search synonyms, close variants, and different variations of the keywords that you're targeting. Phrase and exact match keywords are gonna be more relevant and more targeted towards the search queries that people are typing in, but broad match modifier keywords will help you basically make sure that anytime someone searches keywords that are related to your business that your advertisements are gonna be more likely to show. So I would say the best way to answer this question is if you want to make sure that your ads are not narrow, make sure that your campaign is reaching all sorts of different keywords and you want a lot of volume for your campaign, then use broad match modifier keywords. If you want things to be a little bit more targeted, then use phrase match keywords. You don't need to use all three in a single ad group or a single campaign. Usually what I do is either choose between phrase or broad match modifier depending on budgets and depending on the types of keywords that I wanna reach. And then I'll also use exact match to make sure that some of my ad groups are really targeted towards the keywords that I wanna make sure are the most relevant for the advertisements in my ad group. So if we come back over to my campaign and we're looking here and we're gonna look at keywords here, you can see I'm targeting a lot of just phrase match keywords. So I chose phrase match keywords because that's gonna help me really reach people who are looking for the topics that I want them to find my website. Now. If I look at all keywords, so we come back to the campaign level, we're looking at all of our search keywords. Now for something like Ray Dunn, I'm targeting this exact match keyword and my ad group says exact in it. So that's usually how I do it because I'm targeting Ray Dunn Halloween, I have Ray Dunn Christmas, so all these different keywords I use as phrase match keywords, but in the exact match, if someone's typing in Ray Dunn or Ray Dunn Pottery, I wanna make sure they see a generic advertisement and I send them to a page where they can find exactly what they're looking for. 
Now let's come into our farmhouse sofas ad group and you can see here I'm targeting two keywords farmhouse sofas and farmhouse couch. So the difference between targeting a phrase match keyword like farmhouse sofas and a broad match modifier keyword like farmhouse sofas. Let's make sure you put a plus sign in front of both of these words here. So there isn't a huge difference between these two keywords, especially as Google ads has changed their keyword match types. So basically for both of these keywords, they would probably match a search term like best rustic sofas because Google ads looks at farmhouse and rustic as synonyms. So there's a chance that for both of these, it matches this individual search term, but there's a much stronger chance that this broad match modifier keyword would match this search term. So if someone's typing in something like country sofas, it might not match this phrase match keyword, but it's gonna be more likely to match this broad match modifier keyword. So the reason you would use this keyword is because you wanna make sure you're seeing how your campaign performs for all of these different keyword types. The other thing is for something like farmhouse sofas here, if someone goes and they type in something like farmhouse leather sectional couches, this is gonna be more likely to match with this search term than it would be for this phrase match keyword. So phrase match keeps things a little bit more targeted and relevant and broad match modifier keywords are gonna reach people who are typing in things that are gonna be a little bit more broad and away from exactly what the keywords that I'm targeting here. Now, if you want things to be really targeted, then you're just gonna use exact match keyword, farmhouse sofas, but a best practice, don't target all three of these in the same ad group. I would say choose between either broad match modifier or phrase match, depending on how many keywords you want your ads to show for and how narrow or broad you want your campaign to be. And then exact match keywords, if you want things to be really narrow and targeted, then that's when you wanna use exact match keywords. So the question, should I only use broad match modifier keywords since they cover the phrase in exact match type? The answer could be yes, if you wanna make sure your, your campaign is broad and reaching things. For example, someone types in farmhouse leather sectional couches, that might match with farmhouse sofas. Now, someone's gonna be sent to a page that doesn't have sectional sofas, so that's kinda why I prefer to use more of the phrase match type so I can make sure I'm sending people to the best possible landing pages. However, it's a matter of preference, it's a matter of testing, and I really can't give you the perfect answer until you test and see which keywords work the best for your business, because sometimes some of these broader keywords will convert just as well as someone who's typing in farmhouse sofas for sale. So if you have any questions about any of these Q and A's that I did today, please leave them in the comment section. Hopefully this is a helpful video. Um, make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel if you haven't already, and thank you for watching my video today.